Pew, 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 pew. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the Snatch Edges podcast. I am your host, Ebony, where I teach you all about healthy hair, healthy styling, how to look after your scalp, and you know, me and all our hair goals, all of that, all of that. How's your week been, guys? Uh, it was a busy week for us. It was Valentine's, and it was Black Panther release, and it was Pancake Day. Uh, I only celebrated one of those things this week and it definitely wasn't Valentine's. <laughs> I went to go see Black Panther a couple of days ago. And can I just say that, like, I'm just in awe of black women. Like, I'm not really, like, a Marvel person, so that stuff didn't really matter to me. You know, there's other stuff going on in the film that's great. But the female leads in this film came for everything that I own and took it from me. And I was just like, OK, you guys win. Like, it was such a dope film. Like, it was lovely to see, you know, them playing such a pivotal role. Not being, like, in the background, but really being up there, front and centre, showing the, showing us, rather, how badass they are. And just really, just being, like, embracing themselves. I thought it was so, so, so dope. So if you haven't seen it, go and see it. If you're, you've seen it already, go see it again. Take all of the people in your lives, you know, friends, wives, girlfriends. Keep talking about it. Let's, uh, yeah, let's really support the film. So February, still on the month of love. And last week's episode, we talked about uh, why people love their hair. And I had lots of really positive responses about, you know, how people fell in love with their natural hair, what they did to kind of embrace themselves and really move forward, you know, trying new things out, not being scared to show off their beauty in forms of their hair. But I did mention that I got some comments as well where people were like, oh, I don't love my hair and gave me various reasons as to why and I thought I must address it because it really made me sad like I was just like oh my god people don't like their hair it was it was like really upsetting to read some of the things because <clears throat> it's horrible to think that there's a part of your body that you're unhappy with that you can't necessarily change as easy as something else because it's not like oh you know I want to like you know feel healthy or so I'm just gonna go to the gym and whatever it's just like no I don't like my texture I don't like the length I don't like the way it looks the way it feels that's something that's like that's so deep and um yeah so I wanted to talk about that today if you can hear beeping in the background I'm really sorry my fire alarm is the battery's low and I can't reach it to get out to change the battery so yeah you're just gonna have to bear with me with the beeping anyways uh yeah so if you are in a situation where you know you look in the mirror and you look at your hair and you're just thinking oh I am not in this today and actually going behind, beyond rather having a bad hair day, but like having like a bad hair life where you just think, nah, this is, I was like, God gave me the wrong texture. When he was dishing out hair, he gave me like some crappy shit when I should have had like, you know, what that girl over there has, not what I've been given. And I want to like try to talk to you guys today about how you can kind of overcome that and hopefully accept your hair a little bit more and figure out where these ideas come from. So I'm not going to get into like the history of, you know, um shading hair and texture discrimination and all that stuff because there's plenty of articles on the internet that can show you stuff about it but all of the beliefs that you have about your hair came from somewhere as a child you didn't just wake up and think oh, i've got bad hair you are literally a blank canvas and someone would have had to put that in your head so i i did mention that some parents or pe adults around children will be like you know your hair is really nappy or your texture or doesn't grow and say like negative things or negative comments and children internalise that. They have to learn that something is bad. It has, it has to be taught to them. So what were you told as a child was like, were um, wash days when you were younger really traumatic for you? Like where it was like a hassle. Like I know for me, I used to hate like Sundays. That was the day I used to get my hair done before I'd go to school the next week. And um, oh my days, this is so embarrassing. Like when I was in primary school, okay, so I'm Nigerian. When I was in primary school, my dad used to do some my hair sometimes and he would do threading. Now, in 2018, threading is cool, but in like 96, when I was in primary school, yeah, random times, like in the 90s, because you did not want to be seen dead with thread. Like it wasn't, it was not the lick at all. And my hair wasn't long back in the day then, so it was like short. So it probably came up to like my ear or something. And he used to like thread it real tight and then like bend them. So they looked like, I would go to school and people would be like, oh, Evan, you look like the devil, you've got horns in your head. Fam, that's long. Do you know how hype it is to go to school and get cussed out by boys and girls? And all my friends, like, my school was, like, a lot of Africans as well. So it wasn't even just, like, white people saying it. It was, like, the black people too being like, oh, what's going on with your head? Ha, 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 That's, fam. You know, the ones that still pains me. 
it still pains me to this day to think about it but like you know he tried to uh do what he do what he could but yeah fred in 2018 you know erica badu's rocking it it's the lick now people are making it look cool but sometimes work with your children and give them styles that are not going to get them duffied on the playground but yeah so what other things i was talking to people <clears throat> A few common things, like a few common themes come up when people are telling me about their distaste or their their discomfort with wearing their hair. And um, there was four main categories that people, I could like group the people into. So the first one was their texture. Now this is mostly for people who have got uh, what would be technically termed like 4C hair or like nappy hair. And I don't, I don't subscribe to hair typing because most people have got multiple hair types on their head. And even then, okay, if you know what curl pattern you have, then what are you going to do with it? Some people are like, oh, you have to use these products or treat it differently. No, everyone's hair is quite individual. So even if you have like a really thick texture, it doesn't necessarily mean you can do everything the same way as everybody else with your hair texture, quote unquote. So yeah, the girls with the uh, tighter coils, with the kinks, with the, the naps, as some people would call them. They just don't get no love more times. Growing up, you do see more more pictures and in the media of like the girls with um the mixed race kind of look. Or like, you know, back in the day we used to call it coolie hair, where their hair's got that glossy shine, they've got ringlets, you know, they can do the wash and goes and their hair just be bouncing. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first went natural, I thought that when I cut my hair, that's what I was gonna get. And I don't know where that came from because <laughs> nobody in my family has that. Like it, it just it doesn't make sense. And even now people will be like, Oh, but your hair's soft as curly. I'm like, and so? What what do I gain from it? Like I don't get an award, I don't get a prize for having a certain texture of hair. It every texture comes with its pros and with its cons. So it's about embracing what you have and learning to deal with it. And I think most of the problems come from not understanding how to properly take care of your own texture. So where you might see everybody who's natural, who's got like the looser hair texture can do the wash and goes and use like tons of gel or like really easy products. So their wash day will be like, oh, I'm just gonna like use a diffuser and yeah, yeah, yeah. But your texture might shrink up as soon as that like, water touches it. You have to find someone, you have to find an example to follow that can, that relates to you. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't, like, it wouldn't make sense to me to follow a tutorial of someone who's got a completely different hair type to me and expect mine to look exactly the same. I can use it for inspiration, but if I'm trying to follow a style, like, you know, step by step by step, it's not going to work for me. Like, I'm not going to... My hair texture isn't going to change overnight, especially, like, if I manipulate it a certain way. I can do things to it to, you know, either thicken it up, make it more kinky or less kinky, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I have to accept the texture that I have and work within the realms of that. The next one is that people thinking that their hair is not professional. Now, this is the one that kills me the most. I have so many clients that I'm trying to push towards like, you know, wearing their own hair out, getting them away from extensions for whatever reason. Even like, um, so even if I've been um, doing your hair and extensions for a while, I'm very pro having braids. Like I don't like to do braid styles or extension styles for long extended periods of time and in those times in between they're like no what am I going to do I can't wear my natural hair out um you know people at work are going to make comments and it won't look professional or and as much as it frustrates me I have to understand that for some people like I've, I've been quite lucky I don't even want to say that I've been lucky but I've never experienced in the workplace more than like random curiosity it's never my hair's never caused me a problem but I know for some people it's very very real and even for school children like there's always something in the news about like you know a child went in with like locks or with braids or extensions and I'm like these are styles we've been rocking from the beginning of time how can you tell me it's not a part of your dress code like that's it's so culturally insensitive especially when I hear it in places like London I'm like because London's mixed up. Like, there's bare people from every culture here. So why are you then telling me that you made a dress code and you you deliberately excluded something that is the go-to style for a set of people? And most of the time it doesn't make sense because I can understand maybe saying, like, not having, like, random colours in your hair. Cool, you don't want to, like, cause excitement or mix-up. But having braids, what is braids doing to you in the classroom? Like, I used to be a teacher. No one's hair has ever caused me no hassle in my classroom. The only thing I'll tell them to is, like, tuck your ponytail into your blazer when we're doing science experiments so you don't set yourself on fire. But apart from that, I couldn't care less what's on top of your head. So why school boards feel the need to be like, oh, no, 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 you know, it's uh, distracting, it's not against our policy, when everyone to look the same. This isn't a factory. We're not making carbon copies of each other. So why would people need to do that? And in the workplace as well, 
people telling that they can't have jobs because it doesn't suit the image of the company my guy what what kind of image are you going for like what what about me says i'm unapproachable or like i'm unkempt those kind of things really need to be really need to be challenged and uh it's hard to be like the first person to do it or knowing that you could face those kind of problems but for me i know that bills have to be paid if i went somewhere and they were like oh you know you need to change your hair first i couldn't work for you because today it's my hair tomorrow it's another problem about me and it's just i feel like it's just going to be downhill from there so you have to kind of like you know send so plate those places out but even still i know the curiosity aspect because the fact that Solange has to put out a song saying don't touch my hair shows exactly how people behave and they just oh you've changed your hair again today oh how did it grow so long overnight like curiosity killed the cat and you need to move away from me because I will hurt you don't put your hand nowhere near my hair don't touch me don't ask me no questions when Sally goes and gets a blow dry I'm not coming in touching Sally's bouncy blow dry and being like oh Sally you know you got a blow dry yesterday your roots are looking a bit greasy today why well, go on like why are you not washing your hair every day like them kind of things there so I don't see why we don't get that same respect uh yeah, so professionalism in the workplace, it can be a problem feeling accepted or having to acclimatise to a certain look or even ease maybe like in the mornings thinking like, okay, I've got this style down. I don't have to worry about it. I don't want to be fussing and fighting over it. Those kind of things. The next one is length. I will keep saying this until my voice goes hoarse. All hair grows. All hair grows. On average, half an inch every month. If you went bald in January, by December, you should have six inches of hair, give or take. Probably most people might even be a little bit more if you were looking after your hair properly. The reason you feel like your hair's not growing is because you're there's something wrong in your routine. You're not retaining length. Your hair will grow. I can't say it. I can't say it enough. Your hair grows, your hair grows, your hair grows, your hair grows. It grows. Your problem is length retention. There's something going wrong why you're not keeping the hair that is growing maybe it's breaking maybe you have a diffuse hair loss maybe you have a scalp condition there's something that's not quite not quite going quite right for you that's what you need to address the biggest one is just mechanical damage so are you brushing or combing it too vigorously are you using the right products are you uh stunting your growth by maybe having like you know uh is your scalp really dry is your hair too oily there's something going wrong and it's about addressing those issues to find out what it is that can help you get the length that you want because black people can have long hair black people can have shoulder length hair butt length hair ankle length hair it's not about oh you know but that person's mixed or that person's from this island or that person's got you know um this person in their family who was like a uh whatever whatever who has long hair that's why they have long hair no i see the blackest of the black 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 girls no mix up in their lineage having long hair and it's because they have a good routine. So it's getting your routine down. Which takes me to the fourth problem people often have. Is the time and effort it takes to look after their hair. I know with certain people, um, hair is not a big issue. So they just want to have a style that they can rock for like, you know, four to six weeks. Go to the hairdresser, get washed and repeat the cycle. Like rinse and repeat all the time. They just want something nice and easy. And that's cool. But it's when you're trying to hide your hair. I think that's when I have a problem because... I. Fam, I don't care if you want to rock a weave for the rest of your life or if you want to rock extensions or you've got a relaxer. That's calm. Do what you want. But it's when you are hiding your hair or you have a problem with your actual hair. That's when I think like, mm, that's not very good. Like there's a there's an issue there. Making time, like anything takes time. So you just have to adjust to it. So in the beginning, you might be like, oh, I thought natural hair was going to be like really, really simple. I was just going to, you know, brush my hair, put two, two eco styler gel in and be ready to bounce because it takes time <laughs> you have to learn certain things you have to learn maybe how to flat twist how to braid or like you know styles that suit your face shape you have to be you have to put a little bit of effort in to reap a reward it's not just as simple as wake up and go or it can be if that's the look that you're going for it really is determined by what what outcome you want you have to put something in to get something out so if you are one of the people or you know someone who comes under this group of, you know, not really too fond of their hair at the moment, I have some tips for you to hopefully turn it all around. The most important tip is to identify the problem. Now, you can do this through conversation with people. So sometimes when I'm talking to people, I can, um, they'll say something and I'll be like, oh, what does that mean? Or like, they'll say like, oh, you know, my hair's just too tough or it like breaks or they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can address it then. I can get down to the root cause. But if you don't have someone to soundboard with, write down all the things that you don't like about your hair. I know it sounds a bit tedious, 
but you'll be surprised at some of the things you might come up with and when you start to look back and think oh actually why do I believe this or why do I think this about my hair you realize um, maybe that's not really like my it wasn't something that I initially thought it was told to me by someone else so for every negative you put down I need you to find a positive spin so if you say okay my hair is too thick fam it means you're not bald no one can see your scalp that's a good thing people out here with fine hair or like damaged hair are praying for you know a thick head of hair and not to say like you should maybe like you know oh it's not because of other people that's why but I'm like a thick hair a thick head of hair is a good thing it's a blessing it means that you know your hair is growing well it's flourishing it can be annoying when like <laughs> if you're like me where you break combs or hair bands and stuff but maybe you just have to learn to adjust so instead of using a hair band to tie up your hair you use like um a long band where you can like tie it in a knot that way you get a bit more tension on it if you feel like um you've got a problem with your texture or like you think oh it's too kinky i can't do certain styles of it go on youtube there's if you subscribe to like you know the hair type and if you want to find out what your your texture type is type in like you know 4b 4c styles thousands upon thousands of videos will come up and i'm sure you're you're going to find someone whose hair looks like yours you know through all the stages that you've been through whether you're at just shaved it off teeny with the afro or you've been growing it for 17 years and your hair doesn't come past your eyebrows there's someone there that can help you out so yeah so finding a hair twin is the next thing and experimenting with basic styles maybe not going for like you know the most elaborate updos or trying to do something real real fancy if you know that you are someone who um say for example you wear box braids all the time maybe switch it up and do like a, a mini twist or something like you know go for like a kink a, a senegalese twist with like a kinkier texture or something something that like you know builds you back to get into towards your own hair texture or if you get all box braids maybe have like cane rows at the front so that you're getting used to having your hair in different ways and learning new styles because it's easy enough to learn how to braid or learn how to twist or even just having your afro out like that might be like a a jump in the future for you but maybe be like okay i always have my hair up in a bun but i usually straighten it maybe let me try like a, a afro puff this time and just see how i can manage that like do little bits at a time. It doesn't have to be, you know, one big massive jump where you're throwing up black fists and being like, yeah, you know, Wakanda forever. Just be easy. Like, just, you know, take it, take it day by day. The biggest thing that can help you is preparation. So a lot of people will, uh, and I'm, I was guilty of this. I went natural and I was just like, yeah, it's going to be easy now. Like I'm set, you know, my hair is going to do this and do that. And I didn't have any of the right products or the right tools. I was still trying to live my relaxed life with a head full of curls and I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning but now information overload there's so much stuff out there that can teach you the 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 basics so what you need to have in terms of having like um which oils are good to use how to pick a right moisturizer which shampoos are great for you uh which accessories can help you like there's so many I have to big up all the girls on the internet who've put in the legwork for most of us because when I went natural, it was probably like nearly 10 years ago now, or like eight, something like that. It was sparse. There was only a few of us doing it. There was only a few people that I could find. And not even in terms of like, the, obviously there's people that's been natural their whole lives. But I mean, people who were showing you, okay, guys, we've been, <laughs> we've been essentially brainwashed into living that relaxed life. How do we take care of our own hair? Like, that's the difference. It was people showing you how to actually take care of your hair. And um, even like for people that signed up to my Healthy Hair Challenge, a lot of people that kind of just don't know what they're doing are like, okay, look, I'm lost. Help me out. It's perfect for you to just start at the basics and just build up a good, healthy foundation. So yeah, those are my tips on how to, you know, easily start to begin to turn the tables around and loving your hair. Because I feel like what people don't realise is that like there's so many lurkers out there and when you have confidence in yourself you don't realize how many people you're giving confidence to, to then for them to be themselves and for them to flourish and them to come out of their shell like i couldn't even tell you how many of my friends went natural after me i'm not even in like a big-headed way like oh yeah i made them cut their hair because there was a couple of people i think i tried to bully into going natural but just in general like just accepting themselves where they thought that it was something that they could never do or like they try a style or I do something for them or they've they've watched the video and they try something and then just to see the joy in someone's face that they've achieved something like trust me it is so 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 sick and just for the younger generation like that's why I feel like seeing Black Panther like films like that I was absolutely in awe because you had every shade of black women every texture you know different hairstyles we had like baldies we had people with locks it was showing like black 
essence in all of its glory and that's what I want people to un like that's how I want people to feel to be like whatever hair type texture length whatever you have like rate yourself highly be like yeah I'm a 10 like my hair is popping whether it's short whether it's long whether it's fine whether it's thick whether you have you know defined curls or a wash and go is like a wash and never for you I just want you to love your hair it really is like a thing that's on my heart so yeah i'm gonna leave you guys there if you do need any help you can always hit me up my dms are open my email is open all the links are in the bottom of in the show notes uh yeah february it's gonna be love month i'm gonna come back with a few more tips if you have tips to help people do you know what if you see a girl on the road and her hair's popping i beg you just tap her on the shoulder and be like sis you're swagging today you look sick you know everything's fleeky Give someone a confidence boost or even yourself. Look in the mirror when you wake up and be like, mate, sometimes, you know, when you fall asleep and your <laughs> and your headscarf falls off and you wake up and just like, oh, fuck my life. Like, my hair looks shit today. Be like, no, no, no. My hair's resilient. It, like, you know, talk to your hair. Do affirmations for your hair. We, we have goals for, like, business and for life and financial. Have hair goals that you can achieve. Be like, okay, this week I'm going to try one new style. I'm going to actually research how to use this product properly. I'm going to make sure that, you know, all my combs are clean and uh, none of the teeth are broken or I'm going to make sure none of the elastic in my bands are coming out that are snagging my hair. Those little things, they add up. They have a cumulative effect. They can make sure that every day it gets a little bit easier. So then, you know, over time, you can see your progress and take pictures of your hair because when you look at yourself all the time, you don't really notice how your um your appearance is changing but there's times I've looked back and I thought yeah my hair was so healthy and I've looked back at like six months later and been like Ebony what was you doing like you was playing around and you can see you know the benefits that certain products may have or certain techniques would have and yeah stay black y'all I'm gonna be back next week take care of yourselves look after each other all right bless bye